Welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel here 2023. We're going to kick it off right. We're going to kick it off in a way that uh, is going to be productive in outlining what I feel like is a roadmap for investors in Hylion um, and or those uh, folks that are interested in the story uh, following this uh, kind of EV push uh, and this push to a greener future. Uh, Hylion's right in the thick of things along with a couple other players. The players, not uh, they don't dominate this space. There's only a handful of them, probably around five, uh, looking to make a difference in the space. And um, we're at the early inception of these companies having gone through a, an extremely rough 2022. It's gone. It's in the books. We don't invest for the past. We invest for the future. And we invest for the future prospects and um, analyzing where each and every one of these companies are uh, in their ability to take the progress that's been made thus far and kind of kind of uh, jump start their their evolution and getting to work here in 2023. I think Hylion's got a long way to go. I think the back half of 2023 is going to be exciting. Um, who knows? Uh, share owners in the company have no idea what it's like to have this company and know what it's like to go up. Uh, and if you want to consider the initial SPAC run up, that is irrelevant and immaterial when it comes to a stock market right now that is demanding that Hylion show me. Shit, so we're in a show me phase. Um, they can talk all they want. Uh, if they're strategically uh, holding back on information, knowing that it's going to fall on deaf ears in the stock market, they're right on the money. I don't think there's any amount of news for any amount of stock that's going to come out right now that's going to move the needle for an individual stock because the momentum and sentiment in the greater stock market, both here domestically as well as uh, globally, is to the downside. Um, with looming uh, recession talks here in 2023, we've got to get in it. And we've got to get out of it. Uh, if we haven't already entered into it already, which is my contention, uh, that these people who forecast that 2023 is just going to be dominated by a recession, they'll be proven wrong. We may enter, enter into what they consider to be a technical recession, but the damage in the stock market has already been done. And for you guys that have weathered the storm all the way starting back into January of 2021, which has been my contention this entire time in tracking our progress thus far this decade, which has been absolutely horrible. Um, it has been an innovating uh, decade. Uh, we stepped off in the frequency of, of, of IPOs into the market last year in 2022. About half of the normal uh, uh, regime has entered into the stock market, rightfully so. Companies don't want to come and step into these too much uh, tough markets. And Hylion has uh, taken it on the chin as far as stepping into the markets at a, at a horrendous time. Now, for the company specifically, they took their opportunity. They picked up some massive funding uh, to accelerate their path to commercialization. Um, and I'd love to sit here and tell you that uh, beginning in 2023, I'm just as excited as I was two years ago. Um, I'm not. I'm not. There are some show me phases that the company has got to go through. And that's just the bottom line. Okay. Um, there has generated a lot of conversation because a lot of comments that have been made uh, have really entered, uh, introduced a lot of confusion on the landscape as to questioning, uh, you know, how solid they are with some of these uh, relationships that they've been so forward with, how they were able to gir uh, gin up such churn when it didn't matter on the onset. And now when it seemingly matters most, um, they're having an inability to gin up, gin up uh, churn. And I don't know if that's strategically or if I presume they just don't have any news to report, which is a heck of a lot more concerning with me if they're in that top five of companies that are really keeping their eye on the prize and what they want to do and electrifying the class eight space. There should be nothing but excitement around this. Um, and I don't sense that right now. Uh, sentiment for the stock ownership of the company is at an all time low. Um, there's going to be people who come on and they say, I'm just fine, Ryan. No, you're not. You're not fine. You're not. Um, you're down tens of thousands and a lot of cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's just the reality of it. You want to be happy about it? Fine. Um, I I'm telling you, you shouldn't be. Okay. There was a lot that ha have transpired over the last coming years, a lot of progress that's been made. And there's been a lot of promises made by Hylion. And whether or not they're able to follow through on those promises made will be contingent a lot along this 15 uh, um, roadmap step that I've got for 2023 in the areas that I'm going to be looking with the company. Number one, we've got to get the certification behind us. 
Um, and Nikola seemingly just got certified and it was done and they released it and that was out. Um, I'm not really sure I understand why it takes Hylion so long to do these things. They really need to understand that they need to step up to the plate and start playing ball. Um, the perception that I get is that they're being complacent. I'm probably completely wrong on that, but that's the impression. And to share my impression with the grander YouTube audience as a voice on YouTube, as an independent voice through the independent investor, I'm entitled to do so. And there's a lot of things that give me that uh, that that sense, okay, where priorities are being placed right now, educating up a YouTube audience. I can tell you how difficult it is to start a social media presence, okay? That is not the tree that I think they should be barking up right now. They need they especially don't need to educate shareholders that are already pissed off about how important it is for the entire class eight trucking space to transition to some form of EV uh, or, or, or range extender solution. We don't need that. I don't need it. I know everything I need to know about the company. Go sell your product, okay? Um, ha have we really established this project enough only to look at it like a public education service uh, and that if the education efforts are not uh, successful enough to sell the industry in understanding how important this product is, then maybe that's research that should have been done on the onset rather than using public markets as a public experimentation um, uh, test tube. But um, certification needs to be done and it needs to be done now. Uh, it needs to be done now. As soon as they've got whatever certifications they need out of the way, we need to get this CARB and NHTSA certification completed and get the EPA certification behind us. We need to have a commercially viable product. It is important for companies, big companies, to understand that they're pledging dollars to a commercially viable product and not a test tube baby, okay? They, they cannot put, I'm surprised that they've been able to garner uh, um, numbers and the way of the reservations and orders that they've been able to garner thus far. If I was a business, I wouldn't be placing orders with Hylion right now. Why? There's no benefit to doing so. You think that there's going to be a place in line as to how, who gets what, and who gets theirs first is going to be in the discussion? Probably. But I've called for, for many, many months now that there is going to be an eventual bottleneck effect that's going on. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong because Hylion's got a real dilemma on their on their um, uh, their their precedents in who gets awarded precedence, uh, who gets their units first based on loyalties. I tell you what, Detmar Logistics, a private company, um, I wouldn't put any company uh, aside from Green Path Logistics uh, in the camp of being the most loyal uh, of all companies. Detmar Logistics isn't even part of the Innovation Council, okay? But I, you know, I, I'd tip my hat to Matt Detmar and say, look, let's just make these guys the, the flagship here in Texas uh, because nobody else has earned it. I, I, I don't know what else to say. You listen to Matt talk, his conviction is right there on the money. Uh, you listen to his uh, desire uh, to, 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 to take trucking into a, a different realm and maybe even benefit from it. I mean, he's a savvy business owner. He's a second generation from what I understand. But to listen to him talk, he believes in this initiative, and I hear more belief and conviction on the on the the part of Matt Detmar than I do sometimes on the on on highly on side. And I, I don't quite understand that, but they do have a dilemma on the on their hands and understanding. Are they gonna, you know, make Matt Detmar wait when he's been so loyal to the cause here in you know getting companies like Schneider who just announced that you know they're going all EV. And they announced, you know, how awesome it is to to enter into the EV truck space. You know, if I saw some disloyalty like that, I'd just kick them off the Innovation Council. You're giving them free advertising through Hylion and the Innovation Council. I've heard nothing of the involvement from Schneider thus far. Do they want to play ball or not? Okay. But we may be in that situation where they're not going to place orders until that certification gets out of the way. So it's number one on my list for 2023 to get this stuff done. You're going to find a different pulse for me in 2023. If this company ends up actually enjoying some appreciation along the line, then I will take my foot off the throttle with regard to my 
um, intensity on this message, okay? Because nobody can question my devotion to the company on the way down, which is exactly where I needed to be to help support and provide what little transparency is out there and available on the social media landscape for share owners in the company. I was going through my comments thread on the last highly on video. Guys, thank you so much for providing that share count to me. It was incredible. I mean, there is a lot of big share owners in this company that follow me. And I, I was surprised. I was really surprised. I thought there was going to be a lot of people that came back and said, hey, Ryan, I, I can only afford 50 shares, which is fine too. You got a little ownership stake in the game here, right? It's it's awesome. You just be um, just as uh, 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 capable of going and blowing that money on something idiotic. But somebody who owns 50 to 100 shares, I actually thought that that was kind of the vast majority of the makeup here on the highly in air community. I'm freaking dead wrong. I eat crow on that. Go look at some of the comments, the people who share, shared their share count in there. It's a big freaking deal. So for the people that we continue to engage with on a week to week basis, we'll continue to evolve this. My tone and tenor is going to actually go down when the stock price starts to go up. Because there's no way in hell I'm going to be blamed for coming on and boosting a stock from its all-time low. Guys, it doesn't get any worse than this. Shit, all we have is upside potential at this point. I saw some real resiliency at the end of the year here. And some of the bears may say, yeah, Ryan, well, that's because it's off 90% from its high. Yeah, I don't know. I've been watching the price action day to day. And the roll off in Hyzon and Nikola, the very last day of trading in 2022, and Hylion actually finishing up both in the markets, uh, the trading market and after hours, told me that we might be at that at that low. Why is it not safe to understand that you guys understand my deductive reasoning by looking at the stock price here at an all-time low and suggesting it's merely a suggestion that we could be, be potentially looking at a stock that's based? It would be different as if, if we were trading at $27, $26, $28, $38 a share, right? And it had run up based on some catalysts that we expect to happen, and, and I'm calling for the stock to go to 100 OK, what do you think has more of a pro, uh, of a potential to happen? OK, this is the very time when you need to look at these things and, and start to question, is this the time? I'm not going to answer that for you. OK, I have my own conviction. I'm very, very carefully taking small pieces at these all time lows because I think it's the most prudent to do so at these times. OK, but we've got to get certification out of the way. That's going to be a milestone for me. To put in the rear view mirror, one less thing to think about, one less thing to spend our bandwidth on as a company to uh, get that completed with the assistance of Cummins, that collaboration is meant to get that Carbon NHTSA uh, certification completed and out of the way. Number two, the learnings from summer and winter testing. If winter testing is going to kick off this year, fine and dandy. Um, I, You know, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about this. Uh, you know, it, it's been a, 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 a public proving ground for Hylion at my expense. And, you know, I, I'm willing to accept that now because I was duped. Mm -hmm. I was duped. I was duped into buying the shares because I thought that they had a more viable product, one that they had established relationships with the OEMs. I'm less confident in that now than I was before. What I am confident is in now is that they do have a product, okay? As, as final as it is, it is in the final stages of its uh, design concept and verification and the first iteration of the RX truck, okay? They want to make sure that they have the best version before it starts to step up into commercialization. Again, I say that tongue in cheek because I don't even know what the hell that means anymore. But learnings from the summer and winter testing will be interesting. Any progress, any dialogue, any commentary on those learnings will be appreciated. I'm quite certain that they've had some, and I'm quite certain that those learnings have gone into and incorporated into the new design or this final design of this first iteration of the ERX, okay? We need to keep our eye on the federal, state, local incentives and mandates, okay? This was a quiet roar in 2022 where none of the companies got any type of credit for being on the forefront of realizing the benefits of these mandates and incentives, and they are a plenty. 
I think a forty thousand uh, dollars tax credit, up to thirty percent to the total sticker price of the vehicle. Highly on hyper truck ERX applies for that. It's a big freaking deal. That of which the stock right now, the stock should be going up on this information. It fell on deaf ears in 2022. And I think highly on took the brunt of really, really poor market timing. These uh, are not going away. The mandates for the fuel credits um, on the uh, renewable natural gas side, which is exactly where highly on is in the pocket. When I draw up my bull bear case against electric vehicles, um, the the well to wheel argument is what gets me more excited about Hylion than any other solution out there on the market, bar none. It, it, it there's there's not even another solution that I'm excited about. Okay, I own some leaps in Nikola. If those end up paying off, great. Uh, if not, no big deal. I'll take my leaps in Hylion and and we'll win with those. But the mandates are aplenty, and it just speaks to the undertone from the very top government at the federal level down to the state level, how serious people are about this. How serious are there? If, if I'm misapplying the seriousness of acknowledging how important it is to look at these solutions and get them into the rigor of our uh, transportation nexus, uh, then then the time is now. Now, if I'm underscoring the importance of that or overshooting the importance of that, then then fine. But it's my conviction that the underlying tone of where we are currently going into 2023 is it's going to be on the forefront of discussion. We hear earnings calls all the time now. It is absolutely part of the discussion. And shareholders want to understand where that... Um, where that responsibility lies. And there's no better way of proving that responsibility by putting some incentivized dollars to this, guys. It, it's just a, a freaking no-brainer when I think about it. Hylion stands to benefit in a big, big way by not having to manufacture all of the oomph and manufacture all of the initial sales generation. Because here's the thing, the incentives come through, fleets are supplemented with those incentives. Yes, they're going to have mandates. And they're going to have mandates that tell them that they have to do certain things. And it's great that they have that reciprocal on the incentive side to allow them to take on this technology, understand it for themselves. When that happens, one of two things are going to happen. Either number one, they're going to hate the product never to be owned again. They're going to take their penalties and they're going to go back to what they've known and what they've loved. Okay. And that is diesel. <laughs> okay. They're going to shit can it. And they're going to go away from the opportunity altogether. Number two, they love the product. And they recommend it. They not only integrate it within their fleets, but they also fly the flag of green. And they start to report on their own earnings calls that Hylion Holdings, yes, indeedy, Hylion Holdings was the actual contributor to these bottom line savings. And I'm seeing a couple of these trickle through. And I want to thank Andreas Rakowskis for getting a lot more vocal on Twitter. I don't know what happened. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't presume to know, but I sure as hell appreciate it, man. I don't know this guy personally, but all I can do is judge somebody on the surface level of what they're looking to put out there through social media. And I freaking appreciate it because that guy and silent alert in 2023, guys, if you have a damn Twitter account, get on there, follow me. Follow Silent Alert, follow Andreas, follow Hylion, follow Thomas Seeley, follow all of these. We need to build up a coalition. And 30 or 40 likes on Twitter is embarrassing. I mention it tongue in cheek, knowing full well that the impact that we have is negligible. Okay. If you care enough about this initiative to take a little bit of extra time and get those social media accounts started and start to have a freaking voice, unless you just want to fall in line with every other socialist peon sheep in this country and just, just cower down to the man and, and not say anything about anything. Okay. You have a voice. It could be contrary to myself. That's not the point to the charge. The point to the charge is to give some credit to those folks that have actually tried to incentivize a little bit of open dialogue with regard to this conversation. It cannot hurt. If you start from a baseline of conversation and you build that baseline up over time, then we are making progress. But progress is not turning a blind eye or being silent on this cause, okay? Super, super important for you to join the cause. 
but Andreas uh, came out and he's had some really, really good information about the hybrid fuel savings. So these different sources of information come through. And that's what I'm going to be looking for is once these expanded fleet trials, we'll talk about it in a second, start to take hold. I want to understand how we can start to qualify, okay, qualify these bottom line TCO benefits. Okay. And I'm seeing, I saw savings upwards of 20% by one fleet owner. This isn't highly on. This isn't even third party verified, guys. This is a fleet owner that's running hybrid in the operations. It doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that. Okay. So on the first day here of 2023, we're talking about really being on the precipice of something interesting with a stock price and an all time low. It's totally fine. You can hang out there all at once. It's fine. No problem. In this stock market, anything is fair game. But when you start to get away from the idea that a stock can never go up or sentiment is so low that you just feel bad about yourself and yada, yada, that's usually the time when you need to kind of flip the script on this thing and look to actually pick up and accumulate some shares, okay? We need to continue to monitor the driver feedback. This is huge. You get a driver that tells their fleet owner or their fleet manager, hey, that was a, the biggest piece of garbage that I've ever seen. Look at the amount of positive feedback. And I look for negative feedback anymore because the majority, if not in its entirety, the feedback that comes out of drivers when they step out of the cab, I, I'm, I'm listening. And I'm listening for negative feedback. Yeah, that was a little bit too noisy when the generator kicked on. Or, hey, I could feel that shift a little more jerky than what I expected it. Or, hey, that wasn't quite as smooth on the acceleration. No, that's not what we're hearing at all. These drivers, these are senior drivers, I hope, that are being able, being able to be put into the cabs of these vehicles because these fleet owners have to have uh, probably it's good. It has a potential to be a biased opinion because they've driven diesel for however many decades, right? Those are the people that we need to get to and be like, you know what? I could see that this could have a place. I could drive this truck every single day for an extended amount of time for however many hours that I'm required to go out there over the road. I could see myself and I can envision myself driving this vehicle. Sound familiar? The secret to selling real estate is just that, okay? The buyer has to imagine themselves living in the home as a home. Truck driver, same exact thing. A truck driver has to be able to imagine them driving the truck. And this is where I think Tesla and this is where I think Nikola really fall short in this category. I have nary have heard about the driver experience thus far. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I would be happy to hear some positive feedback come back because it's good for the industry as a whole. And I'm not trying to be unfair, but I just haven't heard it, okay? So we need to continue to monitor the driver feedback. TCO, total cost of ownership on the bottom line. We need to be prevy to those cost savings that are being turned back in the controlled fleet trials here of these units and really start to differentiate or draw a comparison between the ERX and actual operations and identify where, where it falls short. I'm more interested in where it falls short. Okay. I saw a statistic and I wasn't sure if it was true that a diesel can go 1600 miles on one tank. So it does require the ERX to be refueled with CNG RNG more often than the, the diesel counterpart. How is it that that statistic can be nullified in other categories? Um, is it more durable? Is diesel more durable? What is the total cost of expected ownership when it comes to the mechanics and the maintenance of the system going forward? How many modular changeouts are we expecting over the course of the life of that truck? What type of total cost of ownership in way of years are we expecting to get on the payback? How much payback are we expected to get after how many years? In other words, how quickly can the unit pay back, if at all? <laughs> you know, these are things that are really going to set a sound foundation underneath of the floor of Hylion. And I don't think it's going to be very long here in 2023. This is a catalyst year, okay? I don't think it's going to take very long before the downward pressure that's been put on Hylion I think a lot of it has been, I think it's been outside of the control of Hylion. I do. 
If you can sit across from me and name me 10 things that Hylion has done to justify their stock price going down close to 70% in 2022, I'd listen to you. I'd listen to you. I'll bet you from a bear case, I could do it. I could do it. But in the face of volatile markets and a face of markets, in, even in the EV space, Andreas made a great post. I think it was a reply to mine, uh, merely pointing out how bad of the year it was in 2022. Hylion outperformed every EV in the space. Now, I, I would uh, caution you to take that tongue in cheek and understanding that the timeframes that we've selected fit both of our narratives. Okay. Hylion has never uh, enjoyed any appreciation. Tesla has. Okay. So Tesla coming off of 10,000% to the upside and having a down year of, you know, 70%. Okay. There, there's a little bit of buffer there to be had. Hylion has no meat on the bone. Okay. So me suggesting that um, that that Hylion hasn't done enough uh, to in the face of of markets they would have had to have really shined, um, and and I don't even think that would have been enough because if there are companies out there that are shining right now with regard to the money that they're making revenues uh, progress that they're making it would have fallen on deaf ears in this market the market did not want to hear about progress the market wanted to jam every stock down and put a reduced multiple on them based on the effects of the inflation over their future earnings. That it was a re-rating re year, guys, 2022. And if Hylion's going to re-rate to the to the downside uh, on zero revenue, let's be real. I mean, they're going to come out of this year with with two two million dollars in revenue. It's not going to cut it. It's not going to make muster. Um, but those TCO benefits to the fleets, and we need to start to manufacture some interest. It cannot be Hylion that it's expected with 200 employees to drive this thing to a billion, a billion and a half in valuation. We cannot expect that. We need to have some help from the fleets. My question is, where are the fleets in this? Where are the Schneiders? You know, where are some of these companies that have pledged their loyalty? Wegmans, I don't know. Is there fear that Hylion's going out of business? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. But where are these cats? Is this not a fair question to ask? Will the Hypertruck Innovation Council show its its grit this year? Because they sure as hell were non-existent in 2022. They've been non-existent since they've been announced. We've had a few token orders of 10 slots for placeholders that they've thrown out there. I don't know what the particulars of those deals are, but we need more. We need more. We need these people as leaders in the industry to say, okay, we either believe in this product or we don't. I'd like to understand if Schneider has moved in a different strategic direction, if their loyalties have changed. D to my knowledge, nothing has changed, except for these folks like to have their banner flown on the Hylion website free of charge because it's free advertising. And they can say, here's just another drop point or another bucket of a company that flies the green flag and we have our letterhead flying with the anheuser Bushes and the Ruans of the world. It's not right. It's not right. And they need to really start press and they need to start operating from a sense of offense rather than defense. Hylion needs to stop acting as if they need to be apologetic to bringing this solution to, they need to be cutting edge and they need to be kicking some ass. And 2023 is the year to kick some ass. Whether or not they do it, it all falls on. Excalibur said it perfectly. And I've said this as well. The word for 2023 is execution. You don't have to generate thousands of sales in 2023. What you need to do is you need to execute along your plan to an extent on the plan that you've laid out. These are the things that I think are important, okay? When we start to get into ESG scores, all right? How it is that Hylion is able to contribute to the ESG scores of the number of companies that they serve both directly and indirectly. And indirectly. If Hylion is delivering freight for a, a company and the end user is taking that freight that has been shipped with a, an acknowledgement to the green uh, ESG score, then those figures can be pushed forward along the supply chain. Do you see how this works, guys? That's why customers are demanding this from their fleets just as much as being put into play by the fleets themselves. I think the 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 actual customers, they they actually stand to benefit the most from this initiative because 
they're able to 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 use that opportunity to say, yeah, we are part of a, sol a solution, a part of a green supply chain um, because of Hylion. Okay, Hylion affects a lot of people, both directly and indirectly in the supply chain. The only thing we've got to do is execute by getting this unit in the hands of the supply chains that serve this country every single day. We got to get these motors running. We got to get these generators charging and we got to get these e-axles turning. And we've got to start to log some serious freaking road miles as we start to acknowledge how important these ESG scores are for these companies, especially the publicly traded companies that are reporting on this stuff every quarter. Um, the, the cost, the cost of fuel, the cost of the unit itself, we need to continue to monitor it. Um, and dare I suggest margins, margins are the scariest thing when we're talking about stepping into a potential uh, 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 reduction of the orders backed by security deposits and not rendering any profit on those units at all. Yeah. Yeah. Scary proposition. Um, you know, I, does the, that's one of my bullish uh, or one of my bearish uh, evaluations of the company you know, is that uh, margins on the low end were explicitly identified as starting in the low 20s. Um, and now there's no way that they can do that. And a lot of that is contributing by the supply chain issue, but not all of it, not all of it. You don't chew up 20% of margins by 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 just blaming it on supply chain issues. No, nah, I don't I don't buy that. I do buy that the back orders, or excuse me, not the back orders, but the bulk orders of uh, essential components that go into it can drive the margins higher. I, I do get that. But if you're going to come to the table and tell us that, you know, these first 200 orders, you're not going to make a dime on, which they're not, they're not, I'm, I'm warning you right now, 2023, the, 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 the initial push of this 200 orders, if you can imagine pushing over 200 dominoes, that is the only payment we're going to get as shareholders. You think we're going to generate any profit from these units? No, the, the top end is going to increase, but it's not going to mean anything. It's going to only mean that it is for every dollar sold in the new ERX, it goes against that potential CapEx burn. That's the only thing that it's going to matter. But these 200 dominoes that are being pushed out there with the help of the 2000 reservation order book should help in providing enough churn to the fleets to place those repeat orders and get those on the books. We can anticipate what we could be at for, for year's end. I don't know how the order book is going to transpire over the next five years. I have no idea. 2023, we may end with uh, a potential to fill the original 200 orders, which I don't think that's going to happen. And maybe take on an additional 300 orders, 300 backed by security deposits. Those 300, so I'll be fair. 50% of those will come from transitions from existing reservations, and the other 150 will come from new orders. So the additional 300 is going to augment the existing 200 that will be uh, being reduced as those units are being delivered to the fleets. If we come out of 2023 with an additional 300 orders backed by security deposits, incredible incredible really stands us up to double by a hundred percent sales to that thousand mark in 2024 2025 could be a year where we actually end up getting up into the 2500 orders range and guys if if, if it scares you for me to be talking about numbers and the 2500 it shouldn't because if we can't generate orders like that for drive trains to be sent to the oems multiple oems uh, not just Peterbilt, uh, this story is not going anywhere. And they will have failed on the one word that I think is going to be critical in what they need to do, and that's execute. That's execute. The time is now. If they can generate more than 300 in 2023, go ahead. There's nothing holding you back, okay? The sense of urgency needs to be now, not 2023. If they can get orders backlogged against that potential 300 order goal, that's my arbitrary goal. I have no idea. Hell, guys, they'll probably end up 2023 selling zero units, okay? So let's just start from the, the sheer dust of the matter and say that they're going to sell zero units, okay? And work from there. If they end up falling somewhere in the middle or, or, or far exceeding my expectations because some of the other tailwinds 
kick in the mandates, incentives, et cetera, this company should have no excuse, man, no excuse, unless they want to just call me directly. They can pick up a phone. Most people have one and they can call me directly and say, hey, Ryan, would you mind selling some ERXs for me? Fantastic. Now you're thinking, you dumb shits, call me. I'll sell this unit for you. I, I have no problem with that. Okay. And I hate selling stuff, but this is easy to execute along this timeline and to sell this truck that is badass. You know what gave me the most excitement uh, shutting down 2022? The best interview and the most underrated interview that I saw in all of 2022 was the ACT research firm. When they drove in the Hypertruck ERX, it was at the end of the, uh, it was at the end of this year in December. Phenomenal. If you listen to that, you would absolutely have the same conviction as me. ACT is looking at, and they agreed. I think it was the senior vice president of sales. And I, I don't remember his name. I do apologize, but he did a fantastic job. Kudos, fantastic job. And truck looked great. It was parked on the side of the road and he was talking to the two ladies, I think the uh, president and I believe one of her executives or the vice president of ACT Research both very knowledgeable of space, both monitoring the space from a neutral perspective. All right, they're not cheerleaders of Hylion, but what they were doing is cross-connecting what the Hypertruck can do with what it is they think is going to be a viable solution. From the ACT's perspective, they're looking to protect the environment, okay? They are looking for what solutions out there could potentially augment this need. And there is a need, okay? Thomas Healy talks about overwhelming interest. The overwhelming interest is in the space. I'm not going to get credit to Hylion just yet until they can fill some effing orders, okay? They've got to start selling this sucker. They've got to start selling this sucker. And people are like, Ryan, you need to calm down. You need to get to some... No, no. Stop being so blasé about this. If the time is now, I envision a world that's better off by seeing this solution in our supply and logistics change chains disagree with me disagree i'm right highly young can go tits up and make all the short sellers in the world happy and and i've talked about this many many times before a lot of these short sellers think about the 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 motives of the short sellers they want the company to fail you know how much that stymies innovation you know how much it will be a black eye on the progress of young technology companies if a good company with a great idea like Hylion can't come to the markets because they have so many injects of, 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 of barriers that they had to overcome that were unachievable or, or unovercomable, <laughs> you realize how much of a black eye that's going to be? Could you imagine with all the work that's gone into the Hylion project that somehow Hylion at these all-time lows are not all-time lows, that the stock is going to sink into oblivion and it's going to absolutely just go away? The verdict is still out. That's why the sense of urgency is right now, okay? We need to take a look at any easing news that we have on the supply chain issues in 2023. They're talking about them rolling off here. Uh, in 2023, I believe that they will. I believe that it will start to ease some of the pressure from this perspective on some of the fleets that are reliant upon the supply chain uh, for their uh, components. And it has, by Thomas Healy's admission, uh, allowed uh, Hylion or uh, delayed Hylion in getting some of the critical components uh, in, the, in their chain. And, and so to, to see any relief in that category is going to be a nice catalyst in 2023. To put a measure of how big or how small that catalyst could be, I think it could be rather large. I really do. Because when you have supply chain issues and you have the inability to get certain components for your product, your product slows to market. And that is a big, big pressure on a company like Hylion who needs product in the marketplace. Okay. And once these supply chain issues do ease, I think it's going to be interesting to put that as well in the rear view mirror. I would question what's going to hold the stock back at that point then and there. Hiring is going to be something to continue to monitor. David does a great job. He sends me those reports. I get every one of them on monitoring the hiring 
and the new solicitations for bringing on new talent to Hylion. This is one thing that I give them all the credit in the world and nobody talks about. They have brought in some amazing talent. These are hard hires to make. Uh, I think strategically their location geographically in Austin makes this easier, not harder. I think it makes it easier for them to draw from top talent um, in the engineering and technology fields. Uh, and I give them an A plus in this category. Um, I don't like them burning money so fast, but at the same time, you cannot stymie um, bringing on a talented workforce and bringing them in and learning them up on the culture of working in Hylion and having them really be part of initiative. Imagine how much vested uh, interest they're going to have in this company to actually see it to somewhat of a level of success. Think about how awesome that's going to be. I mean, right now, if I was an employee of Hylion and I didn't know anything about the stock market, I'd be, I'd be like, am I going to have a job next year? Am I going to have a job in five years? And that would be a question for Thomas Healy. You know, if I'm an employee of of Hylion Holdings, uh, do I have some uh, certainty that I'm going to be able to take care of my family and enjoy the benefits that I do today, five years from now? That would be a question I would have for Thomas Healy. And it would be speaking along this very point of understanding how robust the, the hiring on has been on Hylion. Are they doing it for not? That's the golden question. Are they building this empire? And I hardly consider... 200 employees and empire, but are, are they doing this for nothing? Um, are they doing all this dress up uh, to be not invited to the party? Don't know. Let you guys answer that. Uh, increased fleet trials. This is going to be really cool. And I'm really interested in some of those fleets that have been uh, on the, the, the highly on team thus far. Um, none, none more involved, in my opinion, based on what I've seen with some of the fleets that are running hybrid installs right now, uh, Detmar Logistics by name and Green Path Logistics by name. Um, all the other ones, I, I don't know if they're so big for their own good. Um, I don't know if it's just not in their ben best interest at this time that they do mean well, that they're not trying to, you know, be part of a hyper truck innovation council that they feel like their time is now and they're choosing not to get involved. I just think that right now the timing is a little premature. Uh, if I was going to offer somewhat of an explanation or, or excuse uh, as to why we haven't seen more involvement from the hyper truck innovation council, I expect that to change in 2023. It, it better, it better. There was a lot of hype around this. Um, there was a lot of continued flow of investment in the company, that of which is evaporated, it's gone. There is no more value. Value has to be manufactured from within. With the seed that's been planted, with, the, with this seed that's been planted in the ground, something eventually has to sprout, okay? Um, or, or if it's going to die off, then it's going to die off, never to see the light of day. Uh, and we'll see what ends up happening. But the increased fleet trials will be something that I'm really interested in to actually see the highly on uh, hyper truck ERX and the hybrid products going down the road. It's all I care about. I want to see them going down the road. I want to see them hauling freight when it comes down to it in its very essence, guys, this initiative it is not about a lot of other initiatives that I look at in the investing world. Okay. Johnson and Johnson has their niche. Procter & Gamble has their niche, Home Depot, Pfizer, Merck. They all have their niche, United Health. I could go on and on and on. Hylion, in and of itself, in its core niche, is about driving freight in a Class 8 vehicle from point A to point B in a more economically viable manner and doing so efficiency, efficiently and reliably. That's it. If they can do that, and through increased fleet trials, they can demonstrate the ability to do that, which I'm of the impression, let me give you just, just my insights, okay? They've already done that on a small scale. In other words, I believe that the Hypertruck ERX is ready for the rigor of what I just explained. I believe they are. I believe Hylion is taking the time they need through... Uh, validation stage to make sure that they can limit uh, any type of problem that they could catch right now on the onset 
before that kink in the armor gets introduced to uh, the expanded fleet trials. Okay. Now they're going to miss stuff on the small scale. That's just going to happen. Um, they will have to be able to adjust and they will be have to be able to um, um, fix these things and be dynamic in their application on the fly. Okay. Um, that goes under the execution category. Mm -hmm. How quickly they can integrate, how quickly they can troubleshoot, how quickly they can put solutions there to not only provide damage control, but a solution going forward to make sure that the problem doesn't exist again. Um, I don't know if Hylion is ISO 9000 and 14000 certified. Does anybody know? I don't know. Do they have any type of internal safety management systems? Does anybody know? Come on, you guys represent this company with over a million shares, probably, that just come into my message. Does anybody know that they're ISO certified? How they take in information? How the ability of that feedback loop is being provided to the very fleets that are being asked to participate in these increased fleet trials? Who's extrapolating that data? Who is turning back the timeframes for resolution? I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully they've got it all figured out. They've come to public markets having an embarrassing, an embarrassing um, uh, 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 representation of what it's called to be a company. Right now, they're 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 doing well. Hylion stands right at the precipice of taking that next next step. We got to get back up to the billion dollar mark, and we will, we will. Right now, the value is being called into question. And that's why the stock is at an all-time low. And the rest of what could be given as a nod to Hylion has quickly been taken away with the headwind uh, in the markets right now, pushing all stocks down, all of them. It was a very, very tough year for EV, okay? The new orders, uh, we need to watch new orders. I talked about that and, and what we could potentially forecast. See, I can forecast for the fun of it on the Independent Investor Channel. Um, do you think Thomas Healy wants to forecast this stuff? Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. We'll do it for fun. Uh, I don't expect that he wants to do it after that debacle with the original investor presentation. And if I was going to be fair, um, I'm very critical over that original document. But if I was going to be fair, I could probably suggest that there is a potential that Thomas Healy, the CEO of the company, did not mean ill will by putting that document forward. Okay. I'm a reasonable guy, guys. I don't I don't just bitch and complain. Were they completely off? Yeah, they were. Should they have put it out in that manner? No. Would have it generated an, uh, as much churn? No. No. Did it meet its intent, intention? Yeah. It duped a lot of investors. Yeah. Yeah, it did. It sure did. But when we're talking about the potential to forecast where we could be at the end of 2023, I think through 300, right? A 33% increase over the existing orders. I think, or excuse me, a 50% increase over the existing orders that they have been able to garner. If they can garner 300 this year, they better get their ass. They better be at work like tomorrow, get, getting this thing going. They got to get to work like right now, right now. I don't know what the sales team, I don't know what their discussions are. All right. They need a bolt of lightning, uh, not only as a leader, but up every single one of their asses. If they're a senior sales team, Sales people operate with an energy that I operate with, okay? They kick ass. They get off on the ability to sell a product. Now, a good salesman can sell a product they don't believe in. But you're telling me that it wouldn't be fun to sell the Hypertruck ERX? I would love to understand what the hurdles are in sitting across with big industry, okay? I understand it's got to be maybe maybe intimidating. I, I don't know. But th this solution is necessary, Okay. 300 orders, okay? 300 orders. I, I think it's doable. I really, really do. I think if we could do, you know, 25 orders a month, I think that would be phenomenal. And however many people on the sales team and however many people are contributing to that end to break it down like that and turn out those 25 orders per month, I think should be absolutely doable. And I think it should be doable even this early on uh, in the inception. If we're not making anything on the margins, bake in some sales incentives to make sure that those sales are put on the books. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Because right now, the bottom line benefit to those sales 
aren't going to be the the opportunity to expand on those margins now anyway. So who cares? Just drive the sales out the door and show that you can put in a number when we start to evaluate their progress, which will be, I will come back to this list as an evaluating criteria. And I'll come back in 2023 and say, well, they failed to miss the mark. They put in 27 orders for this year. They failed miserably. Um, they're on track to deliver on 12 of their original 200 orders. Uh, and, and that, my friends, is along the spectrum of um, expected uh, delivery from Hylion. Really, I, I give them the widest swath because they need it. Um, they're like an infant child, honestly, at this point, because I have no idea where they're going to fall. They talk big, but they do not deliver on the results. They don't. And they need to start delivering on the results. It's a publicly traded company. If they feel like for whatever reason, the excitement around this product has died down, Pull yourself out of public markets and go private because this is a waste of everybody's time, yourself included. You guys will get a hell of a lot more uh, 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 nights with sleep, okay? But if you actually think that you can make a go at this thing, make a go at it. Make a go at it and set those strategic goals and don't miss those goals. Don't let the people go home until they meet those goals. Give those applicable sales bonuses, all right? I think all the money should be going to the sales team right now if they can come through with results, okay? Sales reservations, and I have referentials here. I'm going to be keenly intent on the ability of fleets to start to earn follow-on orders, okay? You don't think Detmar gets attention in the oil sands region in Texas or the sands basin down there in Texas. You don't think that Green Path Logistics gets the attention of uh, of of UPS, of Amazon, of the customers that they serve by running these highly on trucks as the fleets increase their uh, their fleet trials, that exposure rate should go up. Therefore, the exposure rate should mean that there's a lot more people asking questions and generating a lot more leads. Leads are different for a sales team than a cold call. Cold call, very difficult. Success rate goes down immensely. You put me in front of somebody and you give me all the cold calls, it doesn't matter how good I am as a salesman, my success ratio of bringing those sales in the house is going to be the lowest out of any of the sales team. You give all the leads to a rookie, he'll kick my ass every day. Okay. That's just the way it is. They're both super important. Okay. You want to put those cold calls on a shark like me. Okay. Cause I don't mind blowing down barriers to a Pepsi. You put me on the phone with the CEO of Pepsi. I'll say very simply, Hey, I'd like to introduce you to highly on holdings. If you heard of them, here's what they're doing. They're doing some great things. Here are the three initiatives that they're looking to, 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 to do. Would you mind setting up a meeting? We can come to your facility. We can talk to you about the prospects of what it could mean in your operations done period. That's, that's it. Okay roll back, give it to this highly on senior team. That's what they need to say when they pick up the phone. They should be working off of a script. Are they? I have no idea. I have no idea. Evidently, this is a senior marketing team that knows how to sell shit. From my perspective and my chair, sell shit. This should be simple. Piece of cake wrapped up in a freaking bow tie. You wanted a product, right? Thomas Healy said, my senior team, man, they just said, give me a product and I can sell it. It's shut up or go time, okay? It really is. It's show me time right now, all right? You're a publicly traded company. You need to start acting like it. And you need to start generating some sales on the books right now. It's 2023. The charge is out there. The charge is out there. You need to start selling this product and you need to start selling it right now, okay? Referential orders. Any progress along the OEM lines would be uh, of benefit to me. I've posed the question. Um, I get ignored, so that's great. Um, I'm, I'm just another pissed off share owner, just like everybody else who's um, down in the company, I guess. Um, I'm irritated because I don't get any reciprocation at all on progress. Um, it, it, it's as if uh, I don't have the right to ask questions. In other words, just uh, blindly trust that everything is in order and that it will work itself out. No, that's not how business works, okay? You need to solidify those relationships because they could prove uh, to be potential to be won over today uh, and potentially not tomorrow. What if another company comes along and says, you know what, we're going to slap a generator under the hood and we're going to fuel it by CNG. Where does that leave Hylion? Where does that leave Hylion? 
is Hylion's solution so proprietary that we can't just take another Cummins generator and put it into the chassis of a vehicle? Who others out there in the competition of spaces are barking up Freightliner's tree every single day? International, Volvo, Penta. I'll bet you they're on the phone every day. Is Hylion? Fuck, they should be. You got damn right. They should be on the phone every single day. Enough of this bullshit of turning out the original units with Peterbilt. That ain't going to work. You got to have all the OEMs, all of it. So OEM progress at the end of 2023, we'll evaluate the progress, if any, on transparency, on how we feel like we left 2022 and the potential progress that could be made with respects to the OEM line and the OEM hubs and the integration of the um, Hypertruck ERX powertrain to the actual OEM line. That's going to be that catalyst where we go from 300 orders to 500 to 1,000, and dare I suggest maybe even increasing to 2,500. We get another OEM on the line that that, that uh, pledges a capability of 500. Why doesn't Peterbilt just come out and say, we're going to do 500 orders for you? Stock would jump to 15 bucks. Why, do, why don't they do that? Why doesn't Peterbilt say, you know what, Hylion is our horse. They've been with us since the beginning. They've worked really hard to establish this technology. We're going to give them 500 slots for our customers that want the Hypertruck ERX off of the line. Or we're going to give them 250 or 300 or 400 at the OEM hub. And we're going to ship the remainder of the 100 chassis down to Hylion. And they're going to be expected to do that remaining work and sell the trucks uh, at, re at retail. Is that... I Hey, fine. I'm the asshole. I guess that's too much to ask, right? Too much to ask that we can't get a cap of understanding that Peterbilt isn't just going to say, yeah, you know, I'm sorry, Hylion, you know, you're a $400 million company. We can only give you six slots this year. Six, six. And Thomas Healy would be like, that's really unfair, Ryan. You know, that's really unfair. Is it? Show me what is going to happen in reality this year. In 2023, with your relationship, surprise me, surprise me, work out a deal with Peterbilt to have them commit to a certain number of units. The number is variable, call it X. Okay, the number is variable, but have them commit to the numbers so we can understand that we're not going back and forth between a potential of three units as opposed to maybe even a potential on the high end. I don't see why 500 is so astronomical. I don't see why that's such a big deal. 500? We get a commitment from Peterbilt. You want to know what happens to the stock? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This stock goes from $2, $3, whatever, wherever it is right now to $15 overnight. If that happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to change the dynamic on its ear. That is going to generate some exacerbating buying in this company like you have never seen before. And you want to know something? If Hylion is in a position where I think they're in, I think they know what that number is. I think they know. I think they know. And I also think they know they're sitting on the goods. And I think that the stock action now speaks to this company actually reflecting a price right now that is disproportionate to what is known behind the scenes and what is actually known in the open stock market. That's just, that's my premonition. Okay. The burn rate, my favorite topic. We need to continue to watch the burn rate against the CapEx. Um, you know, <laughs> Bill talked about, um, uh, uh, not not Bill, uh, Panzer. Uh, Mr. Panzer talked about the uh, burn rate actually increasing, new R&D spending for the, um, the Corno generator, yada, yada, yada. We're going to spend, we're going to spend, we're going to spend. So this whole like uh, tag of the company having a bunch of money in the bank and no debt uh, could tr quickly transition. Now, if we start to step into the realm of 500, 1,000, 1,500 orders, et cetera, uh, we can run that CapEx. We can burn it all. They can burn it all. I don't care. They can burn it all. They can put that 100 million of initiative to Carnot. No problem. Because I think the payoff on the back end is going to be worth multiple billions of dollars uh, in valuation to the company. I think the Carnot technology in and of itself, I've discussed um, its value now, which is immaterial at 250 million in my assessment, um, and what it could be worth in the multiple billions of dollars uh, for the multiple applications that it could be put into uh, and, and what it can actually do 
for the class eight transportation space. Now, this is all pie in the sky. It really is. Um, until I start to see a Carno ERX doing the same thing under the rigor that I want to see the Hypertruck ERX, the CNG and the RNG version doing, then we're not going to talk about that. But what I would like to understand is when this company could potentially be self-sufficient. And I, I joke a little bit about the six units coming off the line. I, I cannot, in good faith, I cannot understand that if they have any uh, interaction at all with the board of directors and the senior management, that there's not enough integrity in that room to ask the scary questions that I'm asking from a freaking small YouTube audience a small corner of social media to to look each other in the eye and say, can we make it? Can we actually sell enough units to actually become self-sufficient? And and you'd have the entire room look at you and be like, this this guy doesn't even belong to be in the room. Yeah, I, I understand that. It's because I'm not a board of directors. I run my own company and I run it my way. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, I, I had sales uh, last year on the, on the Independent Investor Channel that would rival most single business owners out there, okay? With very little overhead. And I do my project with ferocity, okay? Where is the ferocity coming from with Hylion? Are they looking at this thing? Is John Panzer looking at the potential for when they could become profitable? Which would be my earnings call question. Have you outlined a strategy to our path to profitability? That is in and of itself what everybody wants to know, okay? I don't need to congratulate John and Thomas on a great quarter because it was another shitty quarter, okay? I don't need to do that, okay? When you deserve the compliments of a good quarter, you'll get it, but you don't deserve that yet, okay? You don't deserve the million-dollar salary that you're getting either, but you get that as well. So let's just move on to the business of it, okay? We're paying you the salary, and the idea is that you backfill the work. I'm waiting for the backfill. Because if we start to get uh, numbers uh, from Peterbilt to say, uh, look, the, the it's we're bottlenecked. We have to turn out other trucks. And, you know, it's only required in 2025 to start to turn out 25% of the line. We don't have to accommodate any of your orders right now. And we're not because we have a backlog of diesel trucks that we want to jam out the door before this mandate starts in 2025, just in case these EV solutions or range extender solutions don't work out. It makes more sense to me in 2023 that these large companies are going to start to jam through diesel orders. Why? Because they're going to start to be a valued commodity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're start to going to start to be valued. Okay. If these EV solutions don't work, they'll go right back to diesel. Okay. And they'll start to complain and lobby. And they'll start to say, look, we, we would love to go to a solution, but we, we don't have one at this time. Okay. So the burn rate, the path to scale, the path to revenue and the pro uh, path to profitability. It's something that I talked about. I challenged John Panzer and understanding, earmarking where that impasse could potentially be. And it all comes through sales. Um, I, I can yell and scream and, and carry on all day. But when it comes right down to it, Hylion has to turn out more than anemic sales that they have right now. Um, do I think they can do it? I don't know. It all depends on their ability to execute. We all know we have a product that runs over a thousand miles of range or about. We all know that the driver experience has been somewhat positive, if not entirely positive. We all know that the solution uh, provides very little, if any, downtime in the refueling and uh, does not interrupt the supply chain and progress as much as maybe the BEV counterparts uh, and or uh, the hydrogen fuel cell counterpart. We know that the infrastructure currently exists in this country to be levered and put to good use today, not tomorrow, but today. We know that. We know that the solution has a vision to be put into the logistics class eight space and put into rigor now, right now. Okay. These little tiddly bits that they're trying to go through with certification and blah, 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 blah. The product exists now to be introduced to the rigor of the class eight space from an electrified perspective. That's freaking where we are. Okay. Can Hylion execute along that path? It's 2023. Get to work. So the path to scale and revenue and profitability is going to be key in 
augmenting that bottom line with sales numbers that generate some revenue. I don't know where else they could provide some revenue streams, you know, the subscription model to the preventative maintenance and onboard logistics and, and, and monitoring programs could be, we have heard Naria of any type of progress on this front. I have no idea where they are. I would just defer back to Thomas Healy in suggesting that we're focused on the ERX right now from Peterbilt to get to mass scale and commercialization, blah, 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 do it. The last thing that I'll mention is, and I kind of touched on this during this address here, for the first address in 2023. And this will be the criteria that we weigh the progress against Hylion. Hylion can come out with a roadmap that says uh, in the Q1 of 2023, we're going to take three steps forward um, and then check that box off with a green check mark. Um, my checklist is real. Um, they need to sell shit. Okay. They need to get busy. They need to operate with a sense of urgency. The stock is at an all time low. Uh, and if they've provided any gift in the market, it's that the stock isn't at 50 cents right now. So look at the positive of this deal, okay? But we need to pay attention to follow-on orders and uh, referential orders. That is huge. We need to pay attention to the increase in the reservation order book, uh, the transition of those reservations to actual orders. And we need to pay attention to those companies out there that have been referred to by those customers that are involved in closed fleet trials that are getting the word on this by no effort whatsoever from the Hylion sales team that actually generates leads coming back to Hylion and inquiring about this product that I insist they need to start selling in 2023 or this thing is going to be over. And I believe that they will. I think 2023, I think we're going to be having a different discussion at the end of it. Who knows? We could be having the very same conversation. At this point, guys, I'm freaking with you. The verdict is out. I'm, I'm just as upset on this p potential for lack of transparency with Hylion and their inability to this point to execute. That's fair, Okay. That is fair in love and war, but that doesn't mean that at any time these guys can't flip the script, get a bit, a little bit of luck on their side, get a little bit of conducive markets, get a little bit of these catalysts out of the way that they know we know that they're going to achieve certification, right? To embolden that sales team to stop focusing on the white glove program and just start selling units. Set a monthly goal of 25 units. That's my goal for you. It's going to be the very benchmark. You guys turn out 300 units of sales uh, in 2023. I'll be a happy shareholder. I could give two shits less whether or not the stock moves off of all-time lows. You generate 300 units of sales uh, and, and get this OEM thing identified in how this movement towards scale is going to be key because effectively executing along this path to scale is the key for this company. There's no doubt about it. There's a lot of things that have to go into that hiring, training, um, bringing on new talent, driver experience, fleet integration, the ability to respond to problems that come up in the fleet. All those things are contributing factors to putting the most clean product out there on the market and selling that product to the industry. And hopefully we have enough tailwind right now going on to where those fleets want to integrate the solution rather than think that they're being forced to integrate the solution. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in to the message, man. As usual, leave your comments at the bottom of the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up and notification bell if you want more information like this. I'm very, very straightforward. I am an atypical YouTuber, uh, if you want to call me that at all. Just a regular fella looking to provide transparency on one of my favorite, if not my favorite company out right now, trying to make movements in the class eight space by integrating electrified powertrain solutions and providing that opportunity to for fleets to move on from a diesel dominated past into an electrified future guys thank you so much for tuning into the message good luck in your investment future